This is a discussion of water dissociation and pH so that the student understands how water dissociates into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions and can calculate the pH from the hydrogen ion concentration and vice versa. Water is a weak electrolyte. It's very weak. It dissociates into water this way, into ions this way. The water molecule, which is a liquid of course, breaks up into hydrogen ions surrounded by water, that's what this means, and hydroxide ions surrounded by water. The hydroxide ion and hydrogen ion then are both surrounded by water. Some texts show the hydrogen ion with just one water, symbolized H3O plus aqueous. And this is one way to look at the dissociation. Two water molecules hit each other and one turns into a hydroxide, the other turns into this hydronium ion. However, we know the hydronium ion is a fiction. It does not exist any more than a bare hydrogen ion would exist. Hydrogen ions are usually surrounded by five or more water molecules it's just convenient to say H plus aqueous. Now the concentrations of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in pure water, that's constant. And it's 10 to the negative 7th at 25 degrees Celsius. And even when we add acid or base, the multiplication of the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion concentration always gives us 10 to the negative 14th. So when the hydrogen ion concentration goes up, the hydroxide ion concentration will go down. This is a very important equation for you to memorize. The hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide concentration is 10 to the negative 14th. Now we're ready to define pH. The pH of a solution is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. What that means is, we express the hydrogen ion concentration in a power of 10 notation. It's called an order of magnitude. It is usually less than 1.0. So it's like some number times 10 to the negative whatever is the hydrogen ion concentration. So we change the sign on the exponent so the pH is almost always positive and the pH then is the negative value of the exponent on 10. And of course with a calculator that's extremely easy. So what's the pH of a 1.0 molar hydrochloric acid solution? Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. That means it breaks up 100% into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Therefore the hydrogen ion concentration is the same as the initial concentration of the hydrochloric acid, 1.0 molar. The pH is negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So if you turn your calculator on and find the little negative sign at the bottom right of the keypad, you then push the log function, which is toward the top left, and then you would type in 1 into the calculator, close parens, and equal and when you change the sign, of course, on the uh, negative, you get a positive number. So the pH here is of concentration 10 to the 0, and that means the pH is 0. What's the pH of 0 0.01 molar hydrochloric acid? Same strong acid, breaks up 100%. Hydrogen ion concentration is the same as the initial hydrochloric. 1 times 10 to the negative 2. That gives you a little bit of a clue of what the answer is going to be. But we can plug it into the calculator. We punch the, log, uh, the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, 0.01, and we get a pH of 2. How about 0.03 molar hydrochloric? What if we get off of this even number here? We do the same type of reasoning, and so the hydrogen ion concentration is 0.03 molar, and we find the pH is 
1.52. That's not surprising because it's greater than 10 to the negative 2, so it ought to be somewhere between 1 and 2 pH. Now what about if we have a base, 0.01 molar sodium hydroxide? Now, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. It too breaks up 100%, but now it gives hydroxide and sodium ions. So the hydroxide concentration is the same as the initial sodium hydroxide concentration, 0.01 or 1 times 10 to the negative 2 molar. The pOH now is what we're solving for because we're over on the right side of the pH scale. We're solving for pOH, and we put the 0.01 into the calculator with the log and change the sign, and the pOH is 2. Huh, but we want the pH, and we know since this is a basic solution, it's got to be greater than 7. The pOH is 2. The pH plus pOH is equal to 14. That's because the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration is 10 to the negative 14. So the pH must be 14 minus 2, or 12. When working with bases, you will first calculate the pOH, then subtract that from 14 to get the pH. Now you may recall the Allier Z chart. It's kind of a map of the hydrogen ion and hydroxide concentration in pH. It goes from 0 to 14 on the pH down here, and you see as the hydrogen ion concentration gets less and less and less, the pH gets greater and greater from 0 to 14. Similarly, the pOH goes from 0 to 14 right to left because as the hydroxide concentration gets smaller, the pOH gets larger. Hydrogen ion concentration, this is the acidic range. Over here on the right, this is the basic range. And here in the middle, that's the neutral range. So, your turn. What's the pH of the strong acid? 0.0010 molar nitric acid. Go ahead and figure that out. What's the pOH of 0.0001 molar potassium hydroxide, a strong base? What's the hydrogen ion concentration of an acid with a pH of 3.2? And what's the hydroxide concentration of a base with a pH of 13? Well, here are your answers and I would encourage you to work those through. When you're looking for the hydro hydrogen ion or hydroxide concentration from the pH, you're going to raise 10 to the negative pH or negative pOH. And if you get the, uh, the P, if you want the pH of a base, of course, you'd first find the pOH here, which is 14 minus 13 or 1.